everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to answer another question and this question has a lot to do with how much time you have to write okay and this question comes from a great channel this comes from jason's weird reads he says my problem with sitting down and writing is my day slash night job i work 12 hour shifts that switch between nights and days every two weeks if i'm not suffering from jet lag like symptoms i'm too exhausted to write and remember where i was going with the story i can pump out short stories here and there but even a novella is near impossible to complete what the hell do i do other than find another job which i've been considering Jason, thank you so much for the question, and I am going to do my best to give you some fucking hope here. A light at the end of the tunnel. Walk into the light. Walk into the light. Don't walk into the light, Jason. So here's the thing. In order to make this work, you may have to completely scrap everything you're working on and start fresh. That might not be the worst thing in the world. And here's why. Because once you're excited about something, a lot of things can happen. I've done it a hundred times. Let me pop the cork out of this bottle before I start trying to drink the foam. You know what I'm saying? Here's what I'm going to throw at you. I'm going to name a bunch of writers. I'm going to ask you what they have in common. Okay? So here we go. Stephen King. This is broad as fuck already, right? Okay, so Stephen King. Hunter S. Thompson. Isaac Asimov. Frank Herbert. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Charles Dickens. Okay. Now, at this point, you probably have a good idea. Some of you may not. But what I'm going to throw at you is the bind up. Okay. Since you said that you do have time to write short stories, but like a novella or a novel is just nearly impossible. Here is what I suggest, and try this with all of the novel ideas you have, like, and all this other stuff. And honestly, doing this like this will probably be very helpful, because even if we look at Lovecraft, who didn't necessarily have an ongoing character, I mean, there there was, like, one character that came up in a few books, but or a few stories... But, like, Lovecraft had, you know, like, the posthumous mythos. But he also had Miskatonic University and the whole fucking thing. You know, Arkham, the whole deal. I think if you were to try to come up... And this is just how writing is in today's world. If you came up with a main character or a set of characters that all work together in a story or whatever... And then took every story idea you have about anything, any like horror story, weird fiction thing you have, all of it, and change everything up to where everything is based on this one character or this one group of characters. Okay? What you can do now is write a bunch of short stories whenever you have time to write that short story, and eventually you can do a bind up. So like Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That was just a series of articles written for Rolling Stone. Um, Stephen King's The Gunslinger was just a bunch of little bits that ended up becoming the Dark Tower series. Uh, The Green Mile, I think, was the same way. I don't know how it was originally released, but I know it was serialized. Isaac Asimov's Foundation, okay, was a bunch of short stories he had in this universe, and then he wrote a um, wraparound. So, like, you know, like, like films like Tales from the Crypt, or, um, like, VHS, or Chillerama, or Body Bag, like, um, movies like that. Like, it's a bunch of short films, but there'll be, like, a wraparound film in parts that ties all of it together. You know what I'm saying? Do that same kind of thing with what you're doing. Um, Asimov's um, robot series started like that too. Like, um, I'm not 100% 
if Asimov's Foundation series, the whole first three books were put together like that. I know after those first three, he actually wrote them as novels. But I know at least the first Foundation book was like that, if not the first three Foundation books. Um, Doyle with Sherlock Holmes. A lot of the Sherlock Holmes stories were like serialized stories. If in fact a lot of the Sherlock Holmes books, at least two of them, maybe three of them, are just short story collections, you know. And then obviously Charles Dickens, um, Jesus Christ, um, the Pickwick Papers, the whole fucking thing. And then I think C.S. Lewis even. I want to say Narnia was put together like that. I don't know. And Dune. Dune was put together like that. So, if you can come up with something that is a through line that doesn't take a whole lot out of you, like putting a bunch of short stories together in this universe with this character, you could eventually tie all those together with just like little chapters here and there that move you on to the next thing. If you want to like put those all together in a big book and like, honestly, you being a weird fiction, dude, you probably already figured this out. But for those of you out there who have never thought about this before, this is something big. And then as far as the publishing aspect of this goes, series books do well. And if you've heard any of my like positive stories or my horror stories, about self-publishing like novels and serials on Amazon. The one thing I've always said is that always have your series book you want to do and always keep it open-ended. Don't ever fucking end that thing because if it takes off and you end it, you're going to piss off all your readers. And um, that's what I fucking did. And, like, that blew up and bit me in the wiener. You know what I'm saying? If you do have time to write short stories, then this is the best way to do it. And then you can just slap those fuckers together. Okay? So, hope that was helpful. If you have a question, send it to me at IHateMattWallGmail.com or leave it in the comments below. Um, you can pick up Bloodshed Review, Issue 1, um, Shayla Marks, Mindy Simmonson, and Jeff Taylor. Issue two, I just finished putting together, and it's gorgeous, and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So that'll be fucking awesome. So, until next time, everybody, type hard. Oh, there you are. Type hard, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.